Matthew chapter 14, verse 1 to 14. So a few days ago in our readings, we saw that John the Baptist was in prison and he was struggling with his faith. He sent his disciples to question Jesus. In today's reading, we hear about John's uh, gruesome and unjust death. Now, this is Herod Antipas, Herod the Great's son. He was the ruler, well, under the authority of the Romans, like a puppet king, uh, through to around 39 AD. And, AD. and like his father, he was a pretty unpleasant character. Uh, the history books of the time record that Herod and Herod, uh, Herodias, his sister-in-law, uh, now his wife, they had divorced their previous partners and that this had actually triggered a real war with Herodias's former father-in-law and Herod. Now, John would have been aware of this, and yet he still spoke truth to power. That was part of his calling, part of his anointing. His purpose was to call people into repentance. It's also recorded in those history books, Josephus, for example, that Herod was paranoid, crazy, fearful of the people, hedonistic in the worst sense of the word, manipulative. And all of that comes across in today's passage, doesn't it? But this for John wasn't a casual Facebook social media moan about a prime minister that he didn't like. I'm not sure John cared too much for who actually ruled the earthly kingdom. This wasn't political criticism. It was calling people, calling Herod to a higher morality of God's word. And there was a real cost for John in this. He would have known that. He literally put his neck on the line. He wasn't some armchair warrior. This wasn't some easy dig at some um, political leader. And our reading, it finishes with Jesus receiving this news. And I, I suppose responding to this news, withdrawing to a solitary place to process his loss. And I always find those little descriptions in the Gospels of Jesus's humanity so helpful. Jesus had to be alone in this moment. Uh, Jesus laughed, Jesus wept. He experienced sorrow and grief. And, and here is Jesus, the perfect, sinless human being experiencing these emotions, showing us that our emotions in themselves are not sinful or wrong. And that like Jesus, we have to acknowledge them and make a right response to our emotions. Jesus here is putting a boundary in place for his own well-being. Now, we don't know how long Jesus spent on his own before the crowds caught up with him. Uh, but turn up they did. Uh, and that was a demand placed upon him, a demand placed upon his energy, his focus, his time. And yet here once again, we see that Jesus is filled with compassion and serves the crowd. And there's no way that we can process here and now in a little video all of what's going on here. Uh, there's not one right way to grieve and, and, and process grief. And, and there are times when we need to be alone. There are times where we might need the distraction of the crowd and work as Jesus did here. Uh, but please do reach out to someone to help you to process that if that's part of what you're journeying through in this season. But for all of us today, I think there's something in today's passage about John and Herod, about how we relate to authority, how we are called to pray for those in authority, to pray for those who lead our country, how we're called to speak truth to authority. But in order to do that, we have to first explore our hearts. We have to explore our motivation. We, we are kingdom people. And the kingdom of heaven is apolitical. It is a supra culture. I think we lose power and integrity when we call out leaders for not living according to uh, our standards or biblical standards. But our motivation, we lose integrity when our motivation is more to do with our political persuasions than compassion and justice. And I think one way that we can check that motivation is through a sort of counting the cost of our actions and our words. 
So I pray you'll have a great day. I pray you'll have a blessed day. And I pray you will walk in intimacy with Jesus through this day. Amen.